What is up? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Back with some more Resident Evil 4 Remake gameplay for you. And today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks how to make getting professional S Plus ranking as easy as possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing to acknowledge is what are the rules for getting an S Plus rank in professional mode. And they are the following. You have to play a new game, so no new game plus. You have to beat the game under five and a half hours. And you can save no more than 15 times. So now that we know the rules, let's get into the other things. Tip number one, and I seem to say this every time I do any type of impossible mode, I did it with the Dead Space impossible mode, beat the game multiple times. Why do I say this? So that you gain a familiarity with the game. So you're not in a state of like, you're questioning how things are going to go, or you're unfamiliar, or maybe you're just uncomfortable, you're not, you know, confident you can do something. Beat the game multiple times so that no parts throw you off or confuse you, or that so you just you have that experience. Because the more you play something, the more experience you get to how things go, how the enemies spawn, what they throw at you, how tough certain things are, and how you can be better prepared for it. But we're not just saying beat the game just for the sake of beating the game. We're also going to use those times beating the game to unlock things that are going to make getting this S plus ranking for professional mode a lot easier and a lot more manageable. So without further ado, let's jump into what these items are, and they are the following. You want to get the Infinite Rocket Launcher. Now, you can't use this to get the S Plus ranking for Professional Mode, but you can use it to unlock a lot of things that you're going to use for the S Plus ranking in Professional Mode. But I will warn you, it costs a lot of PETA. So after you beat a game and do the new game plus on a file, you can purchase it, but that's at 2 million. You can use the charm below with the Leon Rocket Launcher to get it 20% off to help you out. Once you unlock it, it basically will make playing the other game modes and unlock the things I'm about to tell you a lot easier and a lot more manageable, and you can go through it pretty quick, because this thing can basically one-shot just about every single enemy in the game, and as a, it's infinite. You can fire it indefinitely, and hopefully you have the next item already equipped, because you might hit her with some friendly fire damage, but basically get the infinite rocket launcher. It might take a while to get the money, but eventually, once you get it, It'll make these next parts a lot more manageable. The next thing you're going to want to need, this is a must-have, is you want the Ashley armor. Now, to get the Ashley armor, you want to beat hardcore mode in under 10 hours. Why do you want this thing? Why is it a must-have? Well, just like in the original, the armor suit basically protects Ashley from everything. She can't be hurt or damaged at all. And when the Ganados try to pick her up... They will just top over and fall. So even if you fire like a rocket launcher point blank range at her, she will not take any damage. But be mindful, I did have a weird glitch where I was in the maze area and I was walking up the stairs to get to the next area and she wasn't too close to me and they had the animation of her being carried away. I don't know if that was a weird glitch, but to kind of stay at a reasonable distance. But overall, you shouldn't have to worry too much. She, she'll be fine just about no matter what. The next thing you want to have and we're going to get is a Chicago Sweeper. To unlock this, you want to be professional with an A rank mode in basically under seven hours. So that's where I say get the infant launcher, so you can just go in there and play that and go through it like it's nothing. Once you unlock that, this is the weapon that we're basically going to use to carry us through the game. The whole point of getting this S plus ranking and making it as easy as possible is having this weapon and its exclusive upgrade ability unlocked, which is basically the infinite ammo. Once you get this whole thing unlocked, it basically makes the rest of this mode, S plus ranking, a lot easier and a lot more possible. The hard part is getting the requirements to do it. And that's the whole beginning village section. Because the village section is the hardest part to getting this S plus ranking. And I'll go over some steps eventually how to make that as easy and manageable as possible. Next item you don't necessarily have to have, but it will make it easier. And that is the chicken hat. Basically, to unlock this, you have to get hardcore S plus ranking. Basically, the same thing as professional mode, five and a half hours, but you can save as many times as you want. It basically makes it so that your damage you receive is greatly decreased. So I can definitely help you out because they do hit hard in this mode. But as I say, you don't necessarily have to have it, but maybe doing this will help you be more prepared for getting S plus in professional mode. But as I said, you can save as many times as you want as that's the big difference. Also, you get the auto save because in professional mode, you can't auto save. So that's a huge difference right there. But as I said, not 100% necessary, but it definitely will make your time a lot easier. But now let's get into my next thing. 
And this is a big one because I think a lot of people still are confused by this. And I think it's kind of confusing myself. But if you happen to die in this game, whatever you do, do not continue and do not load game. Quit the game and then load it from the main menu. If you continue the time it took from when you died to your last loaded save, will be still added on. So you're not you're you're not losing that time. That time's going to add on. And the same thing if you load the game through this option too. I don't know why it's that way. It's a little bit frustrating and a lot of people don't realize that, but if you're wondering why is your time still going up higher than what it was, that's the reason why. So quit out here, go to the main menu and load your save up there. It's I don't know why it's that way. I personally don't get it, but it's a little confusing, but that's just the way it is. So it's a little frustrating there, but just so you know, just to save you some time. So if you do die, quit out here and then load it from the main menu. Um, I wish they could do that a lot easier and explain that a little bit better. But better me tell you now than you to find out the hard way later on. But now, let's get into the next thing. The main objective, what we're trying to do to get this ranking, is when we meet the merchant, and you can start as even before you meet the merchant, but you want to accomplish all the merchant's side quests. From the pest control, the medallions, the grave robber, the vipers, you name it. You want to do them all on this thing, and you want to get at least 30 spinels. By doing all this, you can get the ticket. You know, I know it says 40 there, but that's just the second one. But the cheaper one, the 31, you want to get that exclusive upgrade ticket, because that's what we're going to use to upgrade the Chicago Sweeper to get an infinite ammo. But as I said, the hardest part is the beginning. Because, as I said, we only got 15 saves, so you might be wondering, well, where's the first save? My first save is not until Chapter 4. Now, you can save right when you start Chapter 4 or when you fight the El Gigante, but that's when you want to have your first save. So, as I said, get familiar with the game and get used to those first three chapters. Live them, love them, learn them, and do not save to you get to Chapter 4. I say you can save right here, or you can save when you first start it. It's up to you, but your first save is not until Chapter 4. Another interesting tip I'll give you right here is the fish farm, which has medallions and some vipers there for the quest. Once you get the gasoline, if you're not comfortable with doing that stuff, all the enemies there, come back in Chapter 4 and all the enemies will actually be gone. So now you can get the vipers and get the medallions. You also pick up all the items you might have not gotten or been rushed because you have all the enemies here. So a little tip for you there. But yeah, you want to be doing all the medallions, getting all the side quests. But now we get to the one that's going to be the hardest part in this whole thing and that is when you got to fight the deranged mutt now you can get it not this one but the next one over here you can get it right here and this is also where you want to make your next save you can make it here or in menendez's house because you want to go there to spawn the mutt but this is the hardest thing this chapter five is the hardest part of this whole thing you can get through this part the rest of it is well not necessarily smooth but a lot easier sailing this dog and i know it's going to seem a lot of easier because i'm using the hand cannon here and have all these infinite ammo weapons overpower weapons but i died so many times doing this okay i mean you can't even count how many times i died trying to do this thing i mean i died multiple times but save in the menendez house or right at the merchant and get ready because this thing takes a lot and i mean i'm talking about like 12 shotgun blasts like two or three grenades, a flash grenade, getting stabbed with a knife twice. Not to mention you got the other Granados and a bullhead running on you. So you got to worry about all these guys. It is painful as hell. It's very frustrating. But unfortunately, the frustration doesn't end there. Because while you do, you might be able to beat him. Then you got to keep it going because then you get to the next hard part. And that is you have to be able to get ready for the, the house defense with Luis. There's another part I died multiple times on, but as I said, the best way I did it is, you know, obviously block off the one thing with the wood, and I put the bookshelf on there to lay that one side a little bit. I shoot the explosive barrel in the window to my right, right there, kill them, and as like one at a time coming in, kill them immediately. Try to kill these guys, not have too many in the room as possible. As soon as you see one, kill them immediately, and as soon as they drop one of those boards, you know, board it up, and then you know you only have one one day coming through. And then once you board that one up, then you go upstairs. And upstairs, I kind of just constantly keep pushing the ladders down, killing as many enemies as possible. But as soon as this bullhead guy spawns there, come in here and kill him immediately. Throw everything you got at him. You know, grenades, whatever you got, throw it at him. Because as soon as you kill him, 
shortly that cuts them in half and you get to the next chapter. And then you'll get to your third save, which is the beginning of chapter 6. Now, you can save again after the encounter the Chainsaw Sisters right before you fight Menendez if you're not feeling comfortable with Menendez. But I leave that option up to you. I personally just, you know, didn't save here and just fought them. It was close, but I did get through. But if you're not feeling comfortable, it does. it's not going to ruin it. Just one less save you have earlier, but you still should be good. But regardless where you're at, at this point, when you start the castle and you've done all the side quests, you should have either three or four saves. So that means you got, you know, either 12 or 11 saves, right, when you start the Chapter 7. And if you do the math, you're basically talking about a save per chapter. But now that you've got at least the 30 spinels, you can finally get what we've all been working hard for. That exclusive ability, ammunition, never runs out. It's not the fact that it has infinite ammo. You don't even have to reload the gun. But, you know, buy the upgrade ticket, give it to the sweeper, and you start to realize now you, you've gotten through the hardest part. If you got through this part, you can definitely do this now. That's the hardest part, getting through the village. And once you get through the village... Once you have this stuff, and also if you didn't have enough spindles, you do have some medallions early on in the castle and give you those two extra ones. So um, if you're not feeling confident with the mutt, you could go that route, but you will also have to go through a few more of the castle people without the Chicago Sweeper. But I leave the choice to you. But once you have that in the Sweeper, basically you can sell all your other stuff, all the other handguns and ammunition, because this is the gun you're going to use to basically carry you for the rest of the game. The only thing you have to upgrade is the damage. But also, you want to still be collecting treasures because you do need a lot of money. Um, and you might be thinking, well, obviously upgrading the sweeper, what else do you need money for? You're going to need money because you're going to need at least two rocket launchers. And rocket launchers are pretty expensive. They're, I think, 160000 um, in this game um, on professional mode. And you're going to need at least two, for one for Salazar and one for Sadler. And basically, because they're going to one-shot them, and it'll also save you a lot of time in the process and a lot of hits and wasting resources. But, you know, get two rocket launchers and if you've been collecting the treasures and you don't have to go too crazy. But, you know, if you've played a game multiple times, you kind of know where all the treasure is anyway. You should have enough to get all that. And obviously you can upgrade the knife and repair your body armor along the way. But now I'm going to show you some cuts I did. Now, I know there's more cuts you can do in this game. But I'm just going to show you the ones I personally did that I feel most comfortable with that are pretty easy to accomplish. Um, the first one is in the room where you try and get one of the heads. And it's pretty simple. You know, throw a grenade or if you have a bolt um, gun, bolt thrower, throw it at there before the guy comes there. I actually killed him before the cutscene even triggered um, just to get that one dude out here. It's not even him that pulls the lever. But uh, basically, you just want to have that thing over there before the cutscene triggers. Um, I've had it when literally the cutscene trigger and still got it, but blow him up before he pulls the lever so you don't have to go down and waste a few time there. And it'll save you about a minute or two, maybe more. Save you some resources, but um, a little time skip there. But that's one thing you can do to skip some time and save some time. Not a big jump, but that's there for you know it. The next skip is with the Ashley section is you can, see you can go right to the clock and it is different on professional mode than on the easier modes for professional I believe it is the seven o'clock so seven o'clock just go right there and you can skip all the stuff and remember you're in the armor suit so you really don't have to worry about anything you just run right at everything and you'll be good so this will save you a few three or four minutes there the next skip is another short one it's with um, when you're going up the clock tower and you got the Salazar um, statue here. If you throw a grenade at it, you can actually just blow it up and you don't have to worry about um, you know, dodging the flames. So it'll save you about a minute. But, you know, it's there. It'll save you some damage because sometimes it's hard to dodge that while also dodging all the other Ganados. But your next skip is actually a lot bigger of a skip is, is with the crane. You have a segment where Ashley will see the hole in the wall and you get Ashley in the crane. As soon as you get Ashley in the crane... You want to go over to that wall and you want to toss a bunch of grenades. Um, I toss three grenades here right before that crane hits. You might get attacked in the back, so be careful. But you get that three um, shots right there. And then you want to get out of the way so that when the crane with the ball you know, activates and hits it, it's not going to have to hit it multiple times and bam, it's over. And that saves you a lot of time, a lot of heartache and damage and using you know healing or 
whatever it is, but that's a big skip right there. It can definitely help you out a lot, so that's a good one to remember. The next skip I actually like personally probably the most because it's definitely a lot easier with it, and that's the whole turret gun shooting at the helicopter. Throw, I threw um, I actually only took two, but I actually threw three by accident, three of the um, big grenades. And um, it blew up right there until I threw that, but that skips that whole sequence, so that's a big thing. And eventually, you know, I got my S Plus ranking in under four and a half hours, so over an hour's time. But you may be wondering, wait a minute, when you unlocked that, you didn't get the, the hand cannon, and that's a S Plus, well, not an S Plus ranking, you only need an A ranking in professional, but why didn't you lock it? Well, that's because, unfortunately, we used the bonus weapons. We used the Skyger Sweeper, or whatever other bonus weapon there is. But even though we didn't unlock that, by playing a new game professional with no bonus weapons, we did unlock something else to make unlocking a hand cannon so much more easier and maybe even more important. And you've been seeing me use it the whole time, and that is the cat ears. This is your reward for getting an S plus ranking in professional mode. With the cat ears, your guns, no matter what gun you use, has infinite ammo. And basically means that you can't really ever run out. Yeah, some guns, even though they have infinite ammo, you will have to reload the majority of them, but you never have to run out. But so with the infinite ammo, all I did was basically just start a new game in professional mode and just I basically went with a shotgun and I upgraded the shotgun to the max and sold all my other stuff. And what's cool about that is that even though you can't use the bonus weapons to help you out, they still can help you out because you can they're always in your typewriter you can sell the bonus weapons. So you can just take all the bonus weapons like the primal knife, the sweeper. I know obviously hand cannons there in this playthrough, but you know, in case you don't have it unlocked, you can basically take all this even the deluxe weapons, basically any of the weapons and just sell them. And I just kept the first shotgun. I maxed that out, carried me easily through the game until I got to the first magnet, the broken butterfly. I didn't max that out, but having that extra money early on made the entire game so much more easier, but as I said, you can use the cat ears. It doesn't affect any of this stuff. Cause it's just an item equipment. It's not a bonus weapon. But once I got through that um, A ranking with the professional mode, which is basically beating under seven hours, get the hand cannon. You know, you've been seeing me use the hand cannon whole thing, and as I said, this thing is absolutely dirty. It's fully maxed out, and it just absolutely decapitates people. I mean, I've had it where it just decapitated three people, like in half. <laughs> They're just standing in a line. But this thing is absolutely dirty. But overall, the hardest part of the S plus ranking in professional is just starting it. Getting started, getting your foot in the door. You know, there's always the first step that's the hardest. But once you start getting it, once you get that first save in, you get to chapter four, you can start to see, hey, you know, you gain some confidence. Chapter five is the hardest part, in my opinion, the whole thing. Once you get past that with the mutt and the whole house defense, it starts to become a lot more manageable and once you get to the castle part and you've done all the side quests you have th at least the 30 spinels to get the exclusive ability then basically it's only a matter of time and as i said five and a half hours i did mine just under four and a half so you don't have to do it necessarily in that time you do it a little longer and some people might do it a lot um, faster than me because you know i'm just an okay player but overall you follow these steps it'll make getting this s plus rank in professional mode a lot easier it can be difficult, but as I said, it's, it's only the beginning part that really bothered, frustrated me. But that's the whole goal of it, getting the sweeper, getting armored Ashley, getting the sweeper infinite ammo, and then just surviving those first two chapters. But as I said, gain familiarity with the first part of the village, understand how the enemies spawn, understand how to get what you got to go and dodge and avoid a lot of confrontations, not taking damage and getting out of there and playing smart. And eventually, you'll make getting S plus ranking professional mode look easy and then you can be like me running around with cat ears wielding uh, maxed out hand cannons but that is going to be it hopefully you guys did enjoy this video hopefully these tips and tricks did help you out and achieve this stuff because as i said there are some tough parts in this but eventually i think if you follow them you'll find it a lot easier but hopefully they help you out and hopefully don't stress you out too much but that is going to be it hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and hopefully I can see you guys back on the next one. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. And I hope to see you all later. Peace.